Hello, everyone. It's my pleasure to introduce Marley Gutti and Jake Agnew. Uh, both um, Marley's a um, senior data scientist at Biogen, and Jake is a senior principal biostatistician. They're going to talk to you about a shiny based ANOVA and power analysis tool. So please talk to you about screen school analysis for preclinical studies. So, this is joint work between myself and Marley. And Marley, a senior data scientist at Biogen. So uh, the status quo at Biogen currently is that the statisticians often receive uh, many requests from the research scientists to perform ANOVA or sample size calculations or preclinical studies. Now, unfortunately, uh, the scientists often use pre-existing software packages such as PRISM, which do, uh, do not uh, perform ANOVA in a rigorous manner and does not perform sample size or power calculations. Uh, in addition, these software packages do not include QQ plot or residual diagnostic plot or other optional diagnostics, and they don't suggest an appropriate model for the scientists to use. Now, uh, sometimes uh, the scientists may perform these ANOVA analysis incorrectly, which may lead to incorrect interpretations for their internal biogen experiments. Uh, they uh, may use uh, incorrect models or analysis submitted to journals, and they also have to be careful about ANOVA assumptions. So. If the ANOVA assumptions are violated, this may impact the p-values or significance of findings. Now, uh, for the sample size calculations for preclinical studies, sometimes the scientists may just pick a number for the sample size without doing a rigorous calculation. If they pick a number that's too small, then the study is underpowered. If they pick a number too large, that's a waste of uh, time and resources. Now, our ANOVA uh, app offers a lot of benefits. So this. Uh, the app uh, we're going to be using to train the scientists to check the uh, assumptions of, uh, of ANOVA and how to uh, make their analysis more rigorous. So we're hoping to create an app uh, that will, is a little bit more rigorous uh, than pre-existing tools such as GraphPad Prism, and we're striving to increase the reproducibility of preclinical studies. Uh, we're also hoping to increase the quality of analysis at Biogen for preclinical studies and streamlining uh, paper acceptance. Uh, some other benefits of our ANOVA app is, uh, relates to automation and standardization. Uh, so by streamlining our calculation for ANOVA and power calculations, we are now obtaining results in less than 30 minutes rather than uh, waiting weeks for the, the statistician to do ANOVA calculations for the scientists. So this uh, leads to both increased uh, efficiency for both of the scientists and statisticians. Uh, we're also in, uh, hoping to empower scientists to perform ANOVA and power, calcul power calculations themselves after we properly uh, train them on how to use the app. Uh, another advantage of our ANOVA app is we're presenting one consensus analysis protocol to the scientists uh, for specific scenarios, such as comparing means across independent groups. And uh, lastly, the ANOVA app um, is standardizing both the data input and data output. Now, we have to be mindful of the scope and limits of our app. So within scope of the app is ANOVA and ANOVA-related sample size calculations for preclinical studies. And this app is only for exploratory analysis, not for clinical trial analysis. In terms of models, we are, we are allowing uh, one-way and two-way uh, ANOVA models, as well as um, interaction effects or no interaction effects. The, the app also supports Welch's well, ANOVA and non-parametric ANOVA. And uh, the app is only handling unpaired design and no repeated measures. Now, out of scope of the app is sample size calculations that don't relate to ANOVA, such as longitudinal or survival analysis of sample size calculations. Clinical trial analysis is also out of scope, and uh, the app does not support repeated measures in ANOVA. Uh, I want to discuss uh, some of the features of our app. So the, uh, uh, the ANOVA section of our app allows the user to import in vivo data and visualize the data. The user can then uh, assess the normality assumption, equal variance assumption of ANOVA. And then the user can decide whether or not, uh, whether or not a log transformation is necessary. Uh, the app also checks for outliers, and the user uh, can remove outliers if they desire. Uh, then uh, the user can select, set up their comparisons of interest, and then the app will provide a results table with adjusted p-values. For the power and sample size uh, part of our app, uh, the, the app does perform both uh, parametric and non-parametric power calculations. But the parametric power is based on a formula approach based on the t-test, and the non-parametric power analysis is based on simulation. 
Uh, one uh, main feature of our app is the app automatically suggests a model for the uh, for the user to use. Uh, so after uh, the user uh, selects um, their interpretation of each of the diagnostic plots, uh, the app will automatically suggest a model. So for example, if the user uh, selects that the diagnostic plot is showing a normal distribution and an equal variance, uh, then the app will automatically suggest an ANOVA model. If the diagnostic plot suggests a normal data and unequal variance, the app will suggest a Walters ANOVA. I also want to give an overview of the power analysis tab of our ANOVA app. So within the power analysis tab, the user can uh, choose their primary and secondary objectives for the next experiment. And then the app will calculate the sample size uh, per group required uh, to observe at least one of their primary hypotheses uh, in the next experiment at the desired effect size for 80% power and a 5% type 1 family-wise error rate. Uh, the app for robustness will plot the sample size requirement per group for a range of effect size scenarios, and the app will also plot the statistical power for a range of sample size per group scenarios. And then finally, the user can output a report of their ANOVA power analysis findings. Uh, some of the parameters the user can select during the power analysis tab is the desired effect size. Uh, the app will automatically calculate the observed effect sizes based on the inputted uh, pilot data. The user can specify their, specify their family-wise error rate and their expected mortality rate in the preclinical study. Uh, the app will automatically calculate the variances based on the pilot data. Uh, and uh, the app will do, uh, perform a different calculation based on the user's review of the equal, um, equal variance diagnostic plot. So the app supports both equal and unequal variance power calculations. In addition, uh, as I mentioned, the app supports both parametric and non-parametric um, calculations for power. And now I want to hand over um, to the presentation to my colleague, uh, Marley, uh, to perform uh, a demo of our Nova app. Thanks, Dave. For our demo, we're going to use a data set of infrared volumes of mice after cerebral artery occlusion. And this data set has three, three main groups vehicle, compound X, and compound Y, and uh, the vehicle is going to be the control group. So let's take a look at the application. So when you load an application, you have three tabs enabled. The first one is the introduction tab, and in this tab, uh, you can see information about the application, like the type of uh, data that it accepts, as well as the type of analysis included. So this tab is just informative. The setup tab uh, contains um, information about the type of ANOVA. Uh, you can upload a, a data set here. And you have a violin plot, a dots plot, and an overview of the data set selected. By default, the application has uh, three, these two uh, data sets, iris and empty cards. So you can play around uh, with an ANOVA application. For our purposes, we're going to use uh, the infrared data set. And so we're going to perform a one way ANOVA, and our grouping variable is going to be group, uh, the endpoint is going to be the volume, and the ID uh, unique identifier is going to be ID. Okay. Now, um, by looking at the data, we're going to be able to predict the next step that the uh, variance is unequal. And again, this um, uh, drop down is just optional. It's just uh, a way for you to tell uh, the application that you expect that to be uh, the variance. Now, uh, for the equal variance uh, tab, uh, we can see that the uh, variance is actually unequal. And so once you click on equal variance, a new tab will load. And in this tab, you'll be able to uh, select if the data is normal under the unit scale, normal after log transformation, or not normal. Now, since the data is small, I'm going to reduce the number of things uh, so that the representation is more accurate. Um, so this uh, does look like a bell uh, curve shape. And so if we go to the QQ plot, we can actually see that um, the first QQ plot has all the points on the diagonal line. So uh, we can safely say that it's normal on the original scale. Now, a new tab opens, which is the outlier tab, and this tab allows you to remove outliers from the data set as well as identify them. Now, uh, uh, reviewing this chart, we can see that there are no points greater than three, 
nor less than minus three, so there are no outliers. So we're going to, we're going to select no outlier. In the final check, uh, check step, the application is going, is going to recommend you a test based on the uh, previous selected uh, choices. So in this case, he suggests um, a Welsh test. Okay. So uh, this bar is going to implement it for ANOVA. We can take a look at the, um, the ANOVA data here. So we're going we're gonna to skip to the multiple comparison plot since that is relevant to what we're doing. And so let's select the pairs for multiple comparison. Have the X um, and the Y compounds. Now, by looking at the uh, co comparison uh, results, we can see that the X vehicle uh, is not uh, statistically significant since the adjusted p-value is greater than 0.5. And um, the Y vehicle is a statistical, statistically significant since the adjusted p-value is less than uh, 0.05. And uh, by reviewing the tables below, um, the chart below, uh, you can see uh, how similar are vehicle on, on X uh, group, groups and how they similar is that from the Y uh, grouping variable. Now, the application throughout uh, has a lot of choices, like increasing the dot size of the multiple comparison plot, the height of the plot, the title. Um, so the application has embedded a lot of customizations that you can take advantage of in case that you have a lot of grouping variable, for example. Okay, let's go to the sample size calculation tab. In the sample size calculation tab, let us choose vehicle as a control group, the primary hypothesis as the Y compound vehicle, and as our secondary hypothesis, the X compound vehicle. Now we'll assume a zero percent percentage of um, mortality rate and a 50% of desired effect size. Now below, you can see that based on the previous selections, um, this table of effect size on the, on the x-axis versus sample size per, per group on the y-axis um, displays actually that the observed effect for the, uh, for the primary hypothesis is negative. So actually, we expect um, that um, the duration of effect is decreasing response. So if we go over uh, the effect size of minus 50, we see that, that the sample size needed is 25, which means that uh, we need 25 animals uh, per group to detect at least one of the primary hypotheses in the next experiment. We can also take a look at the power versus sample size. And here, power uh, means the probability of detecting an effect size in the next experiment. And uh, when we hover over uh, the default 80% statistical power, we see um, that we need uh, 24, uh, 25 animals per group uh, to detect at least one of our primary hypotheses in the next experiment. Now, the application after, after you have um, review all the tabs, you can generate reports. And for the sake of time, I, I pre-generated for you. And you can uh, take a look at the different sections. So it actually records each step of the application, the analysis setup, uh, the initial diagnosis, the final diagnosis, uh, the respective plots, um, the comparison table, and uh, all and the two plots on the sample size calculation for a one way another. We would like to end our presentation thanking uh, the rest of the team. I uh, went in one, Taylor Reynolds, Michael Pearson, and Bob Inkle. And thank you. So let's see. We have um, a question that's been upgraded. Um, does the app generate reproducible code for a specific analysis analysis that's been run? 
can take that one. So that's a very good question. And so far, the application does not. Um, but uh, once application is uh, open source on GitHub, we uh, we are open for anyone making requests and working on them. Have you had a chance to look at any other Anova R packages? For instance, um, there's one called uh, Doex, D-O-E-X. Any uh, thoughts on those? No, I, I'm not. I'm not familiar with that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me neither. It will be interesting to look into it, though. There's just too many R packages. But... <laughs> That's right. Well. I don't see any more questions from the audience, but thank you. Uh, and, you know, I really think that um, you've got a winner there with that app, and I hope that you get lots of users. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Great. Thanks.